Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you are all faring well in this ever-changing environment we find ourselves in. Rather than discussing COVID-19, I want to offer you some simple ideas about ways you can look after yourself and those you love. In times like these, it is often the simplest things that can make the biggest difference to how we feel. As a nutritional biochemist and the author of 13 books, there are three pillars to my work, the nutritional, the biochemical, and the emotional, and I want to start by focusing on the nutritional. Firstly, nutritionally, to support the optimal functioning of the cells of our body, and remember there are about 50 trillion cells that make up our extraordinary body, we need nutrients. They are all necessary, all of the nutrients are needed, but some are extra important at this time. And these include vitamin C found in citrus fruits like oranges and lemons, kiwi fruit and capsicum. It's no mistake that nature makes these foods available for the cooler months. Vitamin C is particularly important for numerous aspects of the immune response, including supporting the critical responses of white blood cells, which are needed for so many functions, including killing virally infected cells. So be mindful of where you're getting your vitamin C from. Zinc is also essential to help the immune system do its job efficiently and respond to pathogens trying to infect. It's found in oysters, red meats, and there's a little bit in eggs and seeds like pumpkin seeds. It is actually the second most common nutritional deficiency that people in the Western world face now. It can be difficult to meet our zinc needs nutritionally on a day-to-day -day basis, and it is certainly something that people can benefit from supplementing. We also need vitamin D. It helps to activate a type of immune cell called a T cell, crucial to a robust and efficient immune response. We obtain most of our vitamin D from sunshine, but there's a small amount in egg yolks, so enjoy your eggs. Sunshine is also incredibly good for your mood, so it can be an extra wonderful doctor right now. There are also countless substances in vegetables and fruits that support us. Phytochemicals are the substances naturally present in plant foods that can offer us powerful health benefits. The anthocyanins in purple fruits, for example, can have specific antiviral effects, and the brassicas, I love them like broccoli, are superstars for supporting the liver. We need good liver function all year round, not just to help our immune system in the lead up to winter. Detoxification is simply a change process that is always going on inside the body. It is how efficiently this works though that can affect how well you remain. If you drink alcohol, I really encourage you to choose the nights you do this rather than making it what you do every night because daily alcohol can take its toll. You want to eat in a nourishing way all year round as best you can, rather than only prioritising more nutrition in the lead up to winter. Soups, stews and casseroles are a great and affordable way to do this and I'll share some recipes with you later in this session. Nutrition has been made way too complex and unnecessarily so. For me, there's no such thing as junk food, there's just junk and there's food. And for all of human history, up until the very, very, very recent past, as a species, all we've ever eaten was food. So even just shifting to focusing on eating mostly whole, real foods, including plenty of vegetables, can make such an enormous difference to your health, your energy, your sleep, not to mention your immunity. There's never been a better time to eat veggies. There are also some wonderful immune-supporting medicinal herbs, Andrographis, Echinacea, Astragalus, just to name a few. You can receive those, they need to be prescribed from a medical herbalist or some pharmacies will be stocking them. Sleep is another vital medicine right now. I really encourage you to get some sleep rituals. I'd actually like to say discipline, but I know many people bucket that word. Your body loves it when you go to bed and get up at around the same time each day. That's when nature does all of its critical repair work. For years, people have shared with me how tired they are. You might be in a position right now to use this time as an opportunity to rest more. There's no commute right now, for example. And instead of Netflix each night, pick some nights where you might like to read. Decide to learn something new. It will keep your brain busy and you'll feel uplifted through that learning process. You might like to explore some of the blogs on my website. There's plenty there to learn about all sorts of areas related to nutrition, digestion, sleep, stress, thyroid function, and sex hormones. So take a look around the blog on the website if that appeals. So biochemically right now, the stress response will likely be constantly switched on for many people. And for some, its volume will be turned up far louder than it's ever been. Our two stress hormones, adrenaline and cortisol, drive the fight, flight, freeze response and they mess with our sleep, our digestion, our energy, our blood pressure, our clarity of mind. The list is almost endless about what they disrupt. 
So we want to approach our stress hormones with thanks for what they're trying to do, help to keep us safe, and yet also not let them run our lives. They do also compromise immune function when we make too many for too long. So embracing practices that decrease their production, that's even more important at the moment. Left unchecked stress can bring additional challenges. Plus they create a ripple effect of their own on other body systems like the thyroid and digestion, for example. And some of you might've heard me talk of a concept called the invisible load. And I wrote a book about it last year. For many of you, the weight of your invisible load will have increased immensely in the past month. But there are simple things we can do to help support our body despite these trying times. And I wanted to offer you some ideas for calm, for better sleep, and I hope also to help children. The way you breathe has a profound effect on your nervous system and stress hormone production. In fact, nothing lowers stress hormones faster than the impact of the way that you breathe diaphragmatically breathing is the one that lowers them. When you breathe in a short, sharp, shallow way in the upper part of your chest, you communicate to your body that your life is in danger. And that style of breathing fosters all of the changes I mentioned a moment ago, like lousy sleep, poor digestion, and loads of anxious feelings. When you breathe diaphragmatically, you move your belly in and out as you breathe, and you communicate to every cell in your body that you are safe, because you would never be able to breathe like this if your life was actually in danger. So to breathe diaphragmatically, you might like to lie down and put a book on your tummy across your lower abdomen. And as you inhale, the book, because of your belly, will rise. So your book and the belly are rising. And then with the exhale, the book lowers again and your belly shrinks back towards your spine. This is great for adults, but it can be a lovely way to help children feel calmer as well. You want the breaths to be lovely and long and slow. Another idea that might help foster some calm is a simple counting exercise when you are breathing. Silently in your mind as you inhale, you slowly count to four. So it's along the lines of one and two and three and four. Then hold your breath for four, not a gulpy kind of hold, more like a gentle pause while counting to four. Then slowly exhale while counting to six. And it's the long, slow exhalation that activates the calm arm of the nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, which I often refer to as the green zone. The green zones likely need some extra help right now. You might like to spend some time each evening before bed doing one of those diaphragmatic breathing practices and or helping your children or loved ones to do so. Focusing on and slowing the breath can be deeply calming for us all, no matter our age. You might also like to put your legs up the wall and open your arms out and allow yourself to drop down into diaphragmatically breathing for say 10 minutes before bed. Just some simple rituals that you can easily embrace to bring some calm to yourself and those you love. Remember too that the antidote to stress is not calm, it is trust. And it can be easy to get swept up in the panic and feel overwhelmed, yet there are always gifts in the changes and challenges that we face. We just need to choose to turn our mind to them. For a moment, rise beyond the statistics, the reporting and the uncertainty and ask yourself, what gift can you see this bringing into your life? What if, for example, what's occurring also offered us an enormous opportunity to re-explore our priorities, to remind you that your loved ones are what matter most, to truly learn you can live with less stuff, to teach your children the power of the human spirit and how we can get through tough times together, to cook meals for your neighbours who might be elderly or financially worse off than you, to retrain yourself to do the job you've always wanted to do, to slow down and focus on nourishment and supporting your health. Collectively, we've needed to slow down for a really long time. We were never going to do it on our own. And this opens up the glorious potential to truly work out what matters to you. Remember that your perceptions are powerful and can change how your nervous system responds to circumstances. Many of us are also finding that our usual routine is completely disrupted or worse with job losses and the fear that can come with that being enormous. For others, the disruptions are more related to their daily routine. Maybe you've had to say goodbye to morning exercise or you now have the children at home with you 24 seven. Perhaps you're working from home or missing the freedom and flexibility of leaving the house whenever you want to eat out or meet up with friends or visit elderly or sick family members. 
Some of you will be essential workers and may find yourselves with volumes of work that seem insurmountable. I'd like to acknowledge all of the extraordinary medical and medical support personnel around the world doing endless double shifts, having to remain quarantined from loved ones. Thank you for your sacrifices, your dedication and for all that you do. For some, the self-isolation guidelines will feel like a breath of fresh air, yet others will be itching to go back to the way life was before. Whether you're the former or the latter, be mindful you don't let all of your nourishing routines fall away as your usual day-to-day -day ones change. It might be tempting to pour a glass of wine every afternoon. However, consider the impact this will have on your body and the flow-on effects it will have on your systems, including your immune system, which needs to be a priority for all of us right now. And plenty of nourishing home-cooked meals, good quality sleep, sunshine, and a breathing which will can truly go a long way to helping our health, our happiness, and our immune system. I've put a PDF together for you that contains six recipes of soups and affordable, easy to cook meals that are highly nourishing. Just click the link below to receive this. Or you might like to consider simply embracing these principles. Eat simple whole foods. Try to plan well to avoid food waste and reduce food costs. Make meals to pop in the freezer for the days that are very full, knowing a nourishing meal can easily be warmed up. And notice the beauty in simplicity, and take some time to work out what's truly important to you. And remember that the opposite of stress isn't really calm, it is trust. Take extra good care of yourself and each other right now. Thank you so much for joining me, I'll see you soon.